Hello everyone, my name is Jessica O'Hearn. I am the Artistic Director and Curator at the Juliet Art Museum, and today I'm going to give you a virtual tour of our current exhibit titled, Retooled Highlights from the Heckinger Collection. The Clay Center would like to thank our sponsors. Without them, we would not be able to bring you these incredible exhibits. Our special thanks to Arcelor Middle, the Elliott Family Foundation, the Charleston Convention and Visitors Bureau, Toyota Motor Manufacturing of West Virginia, the Daywood Foundation, the Bernard H. and Blanche E. Jacobson Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, and Fund for the Arts for their commitment to strengthening the visual arts in our community. The Clay Center salutes Fund for the Arts and the following major donors to the fund whose annual gifts of $10,000 or more help keep all of the arts thriving in our area. The City of Charleston, the Daywood Foundation, the Cecil Walker Charitable Foundation, and Spillman, Thomas, and Battle, PLLC. As with everything we do at the Clay Center, this program is supported by the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History. Thanks to the West Virginia Commission on the Arts for encouraging access to the arts in West Virginia. Retooled is a traveling exhibit curated by international arts and artists from the collection of John Heckinger. John Heckinger's father founded the Heckinger Hardware Store in 1911, but it was John, along with his brother-in-law, who grew the store into a renowned chain with over 200 locations throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Heckinger is often credited as one of the major figures in the transformation of the neighborhood hardware store to the do-it-yourself home improvement business. I was going to build a deck. These prices? Now I'm thinking gazebo too. I told the checkout lady it's marked $14. I'm only going to pay $14. She said, that's right. I got this $55 drill for 32 bucks. They say it's right. I say it's a fluke. Heckinger now has the lowest prices on the items you want most. Guaranteed. Did you see my husband around here? A fourth-generation Washingtonian, community patron, and activist, John Heckinger was appointed by President Lyndon Johnson to be the first chairman of the D.C. City Council. He used his position to advocate for civil rights and diverse neighborhoods. Over the years, Heckinger actively participated in numerous civic and philanthropic organizations, including the United Way Fund, the Washington Urban League, the Boys Club of Washington, and Columbia Hospital for Women. A strong civil rights advocate, he created a diverse workforce and championed causes such as the handgun control movement and business executives for national security. In the 1980s, John Heckinger's booming chain of hardware stores led him to purchase a new company headquarters. He found the offices to be efficient but sterile. The barren space sparked an initiative to beautify the headquarters, which launched Heckinger's acquisition of a tool-inspired collection of diverse 20th century art. John Heckinger was dedicated to art that was accessible and engaging to all audiences. This exhibit furthers his mission by showcasing the diverse range of ideas, materials, forms, and creativity that comprise modern art. In seeking a posthumous home for his beloved collection, he chose international arts and artists because of its commitment to preserving the integrity and public access of the collection. John Heckinger and his wife, June Ross Heckinger, gave their collection to international arts and artists in 2003. Mr. Heckinger died on his 84th birthday on January 18, 2004. Retooled is the fourth exhibit that international arts and artists has curated and toured from the Heckinger collection of over 400 works of art. The collection celebrates the ubiquity of tools in our lives with art that magically transforms utilitarian objects into fanciful works of beauty, surprise, and wit. Retooled brings together 28 artists from the Heckinger collection, featuring more than 40 paintings, sculptures, works on paper, and photographs. The exhibit is broken down into four sections that we will go through today. First, we will move into the section called Objects of Beauty. Heckinger believed that everyday instruments could be objects of beauty. In portraying these objects with reverence, the artists separate the object from its function, focusing on the purity of design. By photographing a mundane tool in wrench, Walker Evans encourages the viewer to appreciate the beauty of line and economy of form. With a documentarian eye, Evans captures reduced, elegant forms to reveal the beauty of an overlooked object. Born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1903, 
Evans is known for his work for the Farm Security Administration, documenting the effects of the Great Depression, helping to establish the tradition of documentary photography. Due to his prominent role in shaping 20th century photography, Evans's work are included in most major museum collections. In the photograph Spinning Wrench, photographer Bernice Abbott contemplates the elegance of the tool as its repeated form echoes across the frame, undermining the assumption that a photograph can only represent a single moment in time. Born in Springfield, Ohio in 1898, Abbott moved to Paris in 1921 to study sculpture in the studio of the modernist Constantine Brancusi. When Man Ray hired her to be his darkroom assistant in 1923, her focus shifted to photography. She became well known for her portraits and photographs of architecture and urban design. This next section is titled Material Illusions. In this section, artists modify and distort everyday tools to question their functionality. By reimagining a tool and a material that renders it useless, artists question how we interact with that object. Each work in this section is a stark contrast to his mass-produced counterparts. Hans Godo Frabel's Hammer and Nails renders a hammer obsolete by constructing it in glass. Frozen in mid-swing, Frabel injects humor in imagining the shattering results of wielding a glass hammer. Born in East Germany in 1941, Hans Godo Frabel is recognized as one of the world's leading glass artists. As one of the very first lampwork glass artists in the world, Frabel turned the technique of working at the lamp to an art form in 1968 when he opened the Frabel Studio in Atlanta, Georgia. In Pickaxe Ladder, artist Gary Kuhn investigates the tension between two forms. He uses a wide range of materials in his work, playing with geometric forms and found objects, fusing them at a moment of transition. Kuhn's work is content-driven and often incorporates a sense of irony. During the 1950s and 60s, Kuhn worked as a roofer and iron worker on large-scale construction sites. Kuhn's experience as a construction worker was formative in the development of his work and shaped his relationship to raw materials. He has stated that he is not attempting to make beautiful art, but is instead trying to understand the world around him. Now we will move into a section titled Instruments of Satire. The artists in this section repurpose, reframe, and redefine tools with a tug-in-cheek tone. The use of humor in these works remind us that the fundamental purpose of tools to execute action can be fun. Stephen Hansen's Man on a Limb is one of his humorous and satirical sculptures of his everyman character engaged in all sorts of routine activities. His often life-size figures seem to conspire with the viewer through good-humored, prankish jokes. Commissioned by John Heckinger, Man on a Limb was realized after the artist sent several sketches of proposed sculptures to the collector. In Paint Can with Brush, Phyllis Yes creates a humorous tension between object and adornment that simultaneously draws out questions of gender and identity. Although primarily a painter, Yes also makes sculptures and videos. Her work addresses issues of femininity and gender identification. She uses tools to symbolize masculinity in her work, then sabotages these tools by overlaying them with lacy patterns and motifs traditionally thought of as feminine. Yes once gave a lace paint job to a Porsche, and in the 1980s she decorated a variety of tools with her floral and lace patterns. The last section of this exhibit is titled Tools and Extension of Self. Tools can symbolize the quest to improve our quality of life. The artists in this section illustrate how tools are an extension of ourselves, both as individuals and as a society. By imagining a world manufactured out of wood and nails, I Nailed Wooden Suns to Wooden Skies by Red Grooms illustrates how tools can realize fantastical visions. An innovative painter, printmaker, and filmmaker, Grooms uses fantasy, wit, and satire as ways to comment on modern life in America. In the 1960s and early 1970s, Grooms developed an exaggerated, cartoon-like style which was heightened with the use of bright, high-keyed colors, bold compositions, and everyday objects. Today, he continues to explore themes related to popular culture, striking a balance between documentation and social commentary. The Long Road to Usefulness is made by Hugh R. Butt, who was born in Delhaven, North Carolina in 1910. He juggled careers as a doctor on staff at a clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and as a self-taught metal artist. 
After accumulating a collection of antique tools, he repurposed these objects into a series of sculptures in the 1980s. The artist wrote that this group of sculptures signified his belief that it sometimes takes a long time before tools find their proper usefulness. I hope you enjoyed today's virtual tour of Retooled and will come see it at the Clay Center when we reopen.